new proclamations. What wise men, great men, medical men, professional people have not been able to do, God will do it. All those things that are forgotten, your forgotten strength, your forgotten power, your forgotten revelation, everything you said, I had a dream long ago. And I thought, this is what I will do. I've forgotten now, your forgotten vision will come up again. Passion will come up again. Revelation will come up again. New life will come up again in your life in Jesus' name. Only Christ Jesus has the power of this new year. An unforgettable encounter beckons. We are connecting to the God of wonders this new year for salvation and deliverance. Welcome GCK to Asaba. Delta State, Nigeria, January 26th to 31st, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily and Global Sunday Worship at or 700 hours GMT. Also featuring ministers and professionals conference with Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Young Professionals. It's a new year of wonders this 2023. From the Niger Delta, the oil of anointing will be transported by satellite and all our social media links to over 150 countries of the world. Join the team in GCK audience as the man appointed by God, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komoi, connects the world to an unforgettable encounter with the God of Wonders. Glorious music ministrations by choirs from nations across the world with guest music ministration by Jonathan Lee. Darkness gone. Yeah. Premature death cancelled. Yeah. Yours is now to reap the benefit. GCK, the, the gospel, gospel to every creature. Let us pray. Almighty God, our prayer to you tonight is that you will open our spiritual eyes. Help us as we approach your word today to behold wondrous things in your word. We pray, O Lord, that the things that are meant for spiritual growth, for spiritual benefit, for spiritual strength, we will not miss, but we will see. We will understand and be able to appropriate all the good things for ourselves in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. In our study of Colossians, we come to an important subject tonight, which deals with our completeness in Christ. We're looking at Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Paul the Apostle had been busy instructing the Colossian believers that Christ has the supremacy, that he is head, he is prince, is far above all principality and power. He has the position of authority. Is known to the Father, is the master of angels, the savior of men, and the king, the judge of all. In time and eternity, he has been exalted, and he remains exalted. The Colossian believers, as I've told you in previous studies, had the possibility of being deceived, as if their salvation was not complete as if the knowledge they had in Christ and of Christ was not complete, as if the knowledge they had on which their faith was founded was not sufficient to be able to bear them through. And here Paul the Apostle tries at the very root of the problem, and he tells them that they do not need to find sufficiency or completeness or satisfaction and security in any other but in Christ. And it says in this verse 10, And ye are complete in Christ, in him which is the head of all principality and power. 
There is so much in what the Spirit of God has preserved for us in this verse that we're going to limit ourselves to just this verse, our completeness in Christ. Ignorance causes the church to lose many benefits in life. This same ignorance will make the Christian to go through life without experiencing or enjoying many things we already have or possess in Christ, in the mind of God, or in the plan of God. What Christ is to us seems indescribable. The only way we can describe it is in the words of the Queen of Sheba concerning the King Solomon. When he said, when she said, Behold, the heart was not told. And we can say about Christ, all we have in Christ, all we are going to continue to enjoy in Christ, and all we shall receive and possess eternally in Christ, we can say, Behold, the heart has never been told. Actually, positionally, looking at what Christ has done, all things are ours in Christ already. If the Spirit of God could write that upon the tables of your heart, all things, all things are ours already. Those two words, all things, follow through in the Word of God. And see, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Remember what we're studying today, ye are complete in Christ. Because of the substitutionary sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can say, we ought to say, all things are yours. In Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things. Notice that. According as his divine power has given unto us all things. All things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him which has, caused us to, which has called us to glory and to virtue. He has given us all things pertaining to life and pertaining to godliness. Yet, though we know that Christ is our completeness, he has provided all things for us, for spirit, for body, for the soul, for the present and for the future. Yet, we need to say this in reality, practically. Many are limited in their experience of our spiritual possession in Christ. Their situation is described with the situation of the prodigal son in Luke Chapter 15, verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to eat and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Here this prodigal son realized, Why am I here? All things are mine. My father is rich beyond description. My father has all things, and I am the son of a rich, prosperous father. And here I perish with hunger. And this is what every believer can say, that our father has provided all that we need in Christ. And yet, we have not experienced or enjoyed the full realization of all that Christ has purchased for us. It's like the vision believers in Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, verse 2. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And he said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. The point there is this. Christ said, I will pray the Father. I will send the Holy Ghost. Christ said, I will not leave you like orphans. I will send the Holy Ghost unto you. Power, wisdom, knowledge, revelation, boldness, fearlessness. 
All will come with the Holy Ghost, the fire and the power, the revelation and the authority and the anointing. Everything will come with the Holy Ghost. I will send the Holy Ghost unto you. Far back in chapter 2. The Holy Ghost had been sent. And the Holy Ghost was supposed to be with the church forever. And these were believers here. Christ has purchased, has provided all that they needed. And a part of the blessing was us. Have you got this blessing? They said, we didn't even know that's our possession. We didn't even know that's our right. We didn't even know whether there be any Holy Ghost. Peace in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Power in the Holy Ghost. Anointing in the Holy Ghost. Boldness in the Holy Ghost. And the healing power. The spirit that quickened the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll come into you and quicken you. We didn't even know of that quickening power of the Holy Ghost. It had been given. He never knew. And that is the situation of many believers today. God had done much for us through Christ. We should even say, God has done all that needs to be done for us through Christ. And it is faith in Christ that we receive of his fullness and of his abundance. Yet, ignorance and unbelief hinder us from living a life that is fully conformed to God's plan and God's will. I pray that as the Holy Spirit has inspired Paul the Apostle to write to the church that ye are complete in him, that that same Holy Ghost will take these words we're learning from tonight, write it upon our hearts, that we will know that even we, as part of his church, part of the body of Christ, that we will discover the reality of the fullness and the abundance of his provision, that we may be able to say we are complete in him. We we'll look at three points. One, union with Christ. Two, completeness in Christ. Three, our completeness. Number one, is union with Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 And ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. Remember Christ is the head of all principality and power. Is the highest power. Is the prince himself. And he has all the fullness of the power of the Godhead residing in him. There is no power beyond him. No authority beyond him. There is no knowledge except through him. No revelation of the Father and from the Father except through him. God has highly exalted him. And he has given him the position of head. He is the head of all principality and power. But now we need to see that we have union or relationship with him. It says, and ye are complete in him. I want you to notice those two words, in him, in Christ. And you will find that a number of times in the New Testament, that we have a place. In Christ. As we look at this word, in Christ, I want you to see the very significance of it. And it shows our union with Christ. In fact, the initial taste of our completeness or fullness of blessing is realized when we come into union with Christ. It's only when we are separated from our sin, from our unbelief, and we come into Christ, that we will realize what it means to be complete in him. Unbelief keeps us away from God, even away from Christ. Sin keeps us away from God and away from Christ. We live with the sense of incompleteness when we're away from Christ. 
we have no peace, no assurance of forgiveness, we have the sense of incompleteness and insufficiency. But then, as you repent of your sin, and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for forgiveness and salvation, that faith in Christ unites us with Christ. Spiritually, at that very moment, we come into Christ. And in Christ, we come to live in newness of life. We live and walk righteously. We are new creatures with a new nature, with a new purpose, with a renewed mind, with new conscience, with new plans and new power, a new possession and a new destiny. That's what union in Christ, union with Christ does. We come into Christ. I want you to follow that expression in the New Testament, in him or in Christ, and see what that does for us. And as we read, you constantly and silently pray that God will open your eyes to see what you ought to see. That this will become a reality in your very experience. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. You see that in Christ. The moment we come into Christ, we have redemption. Not that we may have it eventually. Not that we'll have it when we die. Very present, at the very present moment, we come into Christ, into union with Christ, we have redemption. We're no more a slave to sin, a slave to Satan. We are purchased and we are bought from the slave market of the devil. And now we totally belong to him. We have been washed and redeemed, purchased by his blood. And we have the forgiveness of sin. And a real child of God who is in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. He has forgiveness of sins. He has it already. His sins have been forgiven according to the riches of his grace. If his sins are great, there is greater grace that has covered all those great sins. In him we have redemption. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 from verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. You see that again? In Christ. In Christ. Here is what we have in Christ. We have peace of mind. There is no condemnation anymore. The guilt is taken away. That's what we have in Christ. The moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he bears all the pain of your sin, all the punishment of your sin, all the problem with, that you had with sin, he's taken everything away. And it means that you are no more guilty. There is no more condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ. If you are in Christ, there is no condemnation. The devil may try to remind you of the sins that you committed far back in the past. But you say, I am free. I don't feel any guilt. I remember that I did those things, but now I've been forgiven. And there is no condemnation, no guilt upon me, because I'm no more walking after the flesh, but after the spirit. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. We come into Christ, we have redemption. We come into Christ, we have forgiveness and there is no condemnation. We come into Christ and we have freedom from the law of sin and death. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17, therefore if any man be in Christ, you see that, in Christ, we come into Christ. Friends, it's not just religion. It's not just going to church or coming to church. It is not just reading the Bible. It is a kind of faith that translates you and transports you and brings you into Christ. You see, when you are in Christ, if I could explain in a physical, natural manner that you could understand. It's like you are covered over with a blanket. 
you are hid with Christ in God. And it means that all the past sins, you are separated from them. The judgment that should have come upon your life, you are separated from the judgment. You are in Christ. If God wants to look at you, he looks at you and he sees Christ covering you all over. If he wants to look at the results of your life, he looks at you through Christ. He sees that you are in Christ. When, somebody, when something is in a box and the box is closed, you don't really see the thing, you see the box. When somebody is in the room and the door is locked, you don't really see the person, you see the room or you see the wall. And when you are in Christ, you know what God sees? He sees Christ. He sees the righteousness of Christ. He sees the purity of Christ. He sees the love of Christ. He sees all that covering you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is the new creature. All things pass away. All things become new. How would you understand that? You put something inside the fridge. Because the inside of the fridge is cold. It's just a matter of time. Everything pertaining to that thing you put inside the fridge, everything is now totally cold. On the other hand, put something inside hot water. If that thing is totally inside hot water, and that water is perpetually hot, eventually that thing will be hot through and through. What do we know of Christ? Christ is holy. Christ is righteous entirely new. You put somebody into Christ and it doesn't matter how simple, how profligate that person has been before he comes into union with Christ is now in Christ. Eventually, you know, he will be so new, entirely new. That's why I said, and it's in your outline, I said in Christ we live in newness of life. We live and walk righteously and we are new creatures with a new nature. New creature with a new purpose. New creature with a renewed mind. New creature with a new conscience. New creature with new plans. New creature with new power. New authority. Power of atony. A new creature with new possessions. And thank God we were going to hell before, but now we have a new destiny. We are now new creatures with a new destiny. All because we have come into union with Christ. You see, outside of Christ, outside the realm of fellowship and relationship with Christ, we are nothing. We profit nothing. We have nothing. And we can do nothing. Think about it. Outside Christ, we are nothing. We have nothing. We can do nothing. We amount to nothing. We profit nothing. Look at Job chapter 6, verse 21. Job chapter 6 verse 21. For now ye are nothing. You see my casting down and are afraid. You see when a person does not know Christ, when trouble comes, it's all fear. When he sees calamity coming upon his fellow man, there's no word of encouragement. There is no word of upliftment because he doesn't have Christ. He doesn't have the promises that will leave the person out of the dungeon and put him right on the throne. And so he says, ye are nothing. And without Christ, the power of God in man, we are nothing. And literally we can do nothing. In Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. That's what we are without Christ. Nothing even less than nothing. Put it this way. Any man, any woman without Christ is a big zero. You live big, look fat, but it's a big zero. And eternity will prove that. Eternity will show that. That he has nothing to pay for his sin is a big zero. He has nothing to appease the judgment of God is a big zero. He has nothing to be able to purchase or buy 
peace of mind, peace of heart, and a good place in eternity is a big zero. Do you have Christ? Do you belong to the Lord? Are you in union with Christ? Because it's only when we come into union with Christ that our lives become meaningful. In John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me. You see that again in Christ. In Christ. He that abideth in me, and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Without Christ, we are without the true lasting riches. Without God in the world. And without hope in eternity. It is union with Christ that links us up with God and with all the possibilities in God. You come into union with Christ. And there's something you will find out. You will find out that you become so united with Christ that all possibilities in God will become a reality unto you. Let's look at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. What a blessed possession. What a blessed reality. That now your life is hid with Christ in God. That's why Satan can touch you. That's why sin will not overcome you. That's why sorrow will not overwhelm you. That's why the wind of temptation in the world will not be able to blow you away. That's why the waves of the ocean in the world will not be able to draw you. That is why the fire of the wicked one will not be able to burn you. That is why the judgment of God cannot even touch you because your life is hid with Christ in God. Union with Christ. Union with Christ. When we come into Christ, all things are totally different. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You see the word again? In Christ. In Christ. When you come into Christ, you are lifted up so high. Lifted up so high. And made to sit in heavenly places spiritually. Your heart is there. Your name is there. Your life is there. The promises are there. And your father is there. In fact, your very possession is there. You sit together in a place of victory, in a place of authority, in Christ Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promises in Christ by the gospel. Partakers of his promise in Christ. In Christ. When you come into Christ, you become a partaker of his promise. Literally, you inherit all the promises of the Lord that are made to us through Christ. That's what it does when you come into Christ. Come into union with Christ and you will find the reality of what we're talking about. Let's go to point two now. Completeness in Christ. Completeness in Christ. In Colossians chapter 2, verse and ye are complete in him. Now Paul the Apostle was talking directly to the Colossian believers. Some heretics had come to them and had told them that they could not have complete blessing unless they went into the rituals of the Mosaic law. And Paul the Apostle said, Christ alone is your sufficiency. And ye are complete in him without the law of Moses. Other people have come to them and have said, You see, if you are really going to have a completeness of blessing, you need the mediation of angels. And here Paul the Apostle affirmed and emphasized, he said, Colossian believers, listen to this, Christ is sufficient. Christ is the one that has all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him without the angel. Other people have been suggesting to these Colossian believers that they needed some hidden knowledge. They needed some hidden revelation that had not been made available in the word of the law. 
But here Paul the apostle said, Colossian believers, listen to this. Ye are complete in him without any kind of hidden knowledge. Some people have been saying, there are some things if you will go down into the sea or go up into the sky, then you will discover some unsearchable riches that had not been revealed in Christ. And he said, Colossian believers, listen to this. Ye are complete in him without going into the forest or going to the depths of the sea or going into the sky. All that you need, you find, you receive in Christ. Ye are complete in him. Let's see this. What? Paul the Apostle through the Spirit of God is saying here that we believers are complete in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Do you see this? He has blessed us. He has provided all blessings through Christ, and the blessings are actually all spiritual blessings. Nothing that you needed that has not been provided for. Whatever you need for now and for the rest of your life and for eternity, it's been provided in Christ. All spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings in Christ. No wonder Paul the Apostle said, Ye are complete in Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery, according among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect, complete, in Christ Jesus. You see it's still in Christ. In Christ Jesus, our completeness is in him. Our completeness is in him. In Second Peter, chapter 1, reading from verse 3. According as his divine power, as given unto us all things, you see, when you read this in scripture, you will wonder why some believers are not fully blessed. You will wonder why some people that read and study the Bible are still spiritually poor. See, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue, he has given unto us all things. Do you remember when I read to you Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3? All spiritual blessings. Do you see over here again? All things pertaining to life and godliness. They are ours. They are ours. That's why the believer can say, as Paul the Apostle said in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. We have been reading about our possession in Christ, our privileges in Christ, our spiritual blessings in Christ, are all that we have purchased for us by Christ on the cross of Calvary. And here Paul the Apostle emphatically says, I can do all things. I can do all things. How? Through Christ. Through Christ which strengtheneth me. It shows very clearly our completeness in Christ. In fact, God's provision through Christ is complete. God's plan to make us live as the days of heaven upon the earth has not been accomplished through Christ. When we talk about completeness in Christ, we can illustrate it with Christ's earthly ministry. Christ's ministry on earth fully illustrates this completeness in Christ we're talking about. Let me show you what I mean. In Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Verse 37. And were beyond measure astonished, saying, He has done all things well. That's saying, we're complete in Him. We see Him, we receive all things. He touches our lives and everything becomes new. 
and there is nothing we're looking for which we have not got in Christ, see the earthly ministry of Christ and see the result of that earthly ministry. He has done all things well. You see, when you realize our completeness in Christ, you will look at your life in the morning, you will say, thanks be to the Lord, he has done all things well. You will look at your life in the evening and you will say, thanks be to the Lord, he has done all things well. And at the end of time, if Jesus Christ tarries, you will look at yourself and as you look back and see all the water that has gone under the bridge, all the things he has made you to overcome, all the victories that he has given you, you will say, I am complete in Christ and I can testify. He has done all things well. Let's illustrate it from another angle. From the ministry of Jesus Christ, what it means to be complete in him. Let's turn to Matthew now. Matthew chapter 9, verse 22. Matthew chapter 9, verse 22. But Jesus turned about him, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. 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 Thy faith has made thee whole. Isn't that being complete? And the woman was made Whole from that hour. No pain, no sickness, nothing whatever. He became whole. In chapter 12 of Matthew. Matthew chapter 12, verse 13. Then said he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth. And it was restored whole. Like as the order. You see the idea of completeness there? Complete, perfect, fully restored, made full. And then in Matthew chapter 14, Matthew chapter 14, verses 34 and 35 and 36. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that he might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole, complete. You see, this is the illustration. His earthly ministry made every infirm and sick person whole. And today, his ministry also is still making us whole. When we approach him, he makes us spiritually whole, completely healthy abundantly provided for. So then, it is very clear that our completeness is in Christ. We are complete in Him. That means our salvation is complete in Christ. Nothing else needs to be done by man or angel, by Moses or the past or another Messiah still to be born. All that God requires so He can forgive us and save us has been done by Christ. There's nothing you are waiting for if you have not been born again. Believe and be born again. Because our salvation is complete in Christ. Some people say, what will I do now? Christ has done everything. Only repent and believe. And the moment you believe and you touch him by faith, you are made whole and you are saved immediately. Not only that, we are complete in him. The nature of holiness which we lost in Christ, has not been completely restored through Christ. His sanctifying blood can so purify us today until we become part of a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but holy and without blemish. You can be whole, you can be complete, and be given a kind of holiness, a kind of righteousness, a kind of sanctification that will fully please the Father that will look at you through and through, within and without, and it will say, you are complete in holiness. Not in your strength, not in your power, but because we are complete in Him. It's always in Him. Not only that, being complete in Him means this, that the weak can now be strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. Christ has opened the way, and He has prepared us to receive power from on high power in the Holy Ghost that brings complete victory is now available to the sanctified believer. 
Now we are complete in him. You are looking for power. Remain in Christ. Because you don't need any power beyond that which Christ can provide. Because the power that Christ will provide will give you complete authority. Complete power. And you will be able to do everything that he wants you to do. And make your life meaningful. We are complete in him. In Christ and through Christ, all things are now ready. By his stripes, we are healed from all kinds of sicknesses. And through his cross, in everything, we are now enriched by him. So then, we learn that we are complete in him. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. And see the reality and the possibility of our completeness in Christ. From verse 16, that he will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Listen to what follows. That ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end. Amen. So you will see that we are truly complete in him. All that we need, we can find in Christ. How do we enjoy? How do we experience this completeness? That brings me to the third point, our completeness. Our completeness. Uh, no doubt, there are times when we find children of highly educated professors dropping out of school. The father, highly educated, the child, a dropout. What I'm saying is, there are times you will find Christians, believers, who are really, positionally, possesses all things in Christ, and yet, unfortunately, a dropout. Sometimes you find that available provisions are disregarded. Like these children I've spoken about, they disregard all that the father, the highly educated professor can provide. Sometimes we too, as children of God, we ought to be complete in Christ, but then we do not have, we do not possess, we do not enjoy all that is really ours. Sometimes we find individuals who are heirs to great inheritance, living like beggars in abject poverty. Ignorance and neglect will make them paupers. Often you find Christians who are supposed to be complete in Christ. They worry through life. They live without perfect peace without complete security, without abundant grace, without the full light of the gospel, without sound health, without spiritual power, without total victory. What we're saying is this, they are king's kids. They are children of the king, possessing all things, but they live like orphans on earth. Why? Because of ignorance, carelessness, laziness, unbelief, and disobedience. To have the practical experience and to know the continual and full realization of our completeness in Christ, we must know all that is rightfully ours in Christ. If we don't know about it, how can we possess it? If we don't know about it, how can we claim it? If we do not have the knowledge of what we have or what we ought to have in Christ, how are we going to lay claim to it by faith in Christ? So then, we ought to know. And then we must believe and pray constantly to receive what truly, actually belongs to us. Waiting for someone else to claim our inheritance for us will be childish. The food is on the table. And you are waiting for somebody to come and put it in your mouth. Isn't that childish? All that Christ has provided is yours. And you are waiting for somebody to be able to bring it out of the book out of the Bible and give it to you. We've shown you in the Bible. We've shown you that every little child, everyone that has faith in Christ, everyone in union with Christ, that we are complete in Christ. 
All things are ours. Therefore, it will be childish for you or for me to be waiting for somebody else to come and pray, to come and claim, and to come and give me what rightfully belongs to me. What should I do? What should you do? You should come boldly onto the throne of grace and pray with the confidence of a Christian who knows that he is complete in Christ. And then will what you have actually be yours in a practical sense. Let's look at Colossians again, chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. And ye are complete in him. Think about it right there where you are. Not that you are complete, but unfortunately, you are not complete anymore in him. Not that by and by, you will be complete in him, but unfortunately now, you must live as a spiritual pauper. No, but right now, at this very moment of need, at the time you need the peace of God, at the time you need the grace of God, at the time you need the salvation of the Lord, ye right now are complete in Him. It is not something we push to the back. It is not something we push to the future. Right now in the present tense, ye are complete in Him. Let's look at John chapter 14. The consequence of that, if you are complete in Christ, if I am complete in Christ, what's the result of that? What's the consequence of that? In John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. And whatsoever ye ask in my name, that will I do. Isn't that the result of being complete in Christ? It says, all you need, you find in me. All you will ever want, it's in me. And it's very near you. I'm not far away from you. You are living in me, and I'm abiding in you. You are in Christ, in union with Christ. And everything you ever desire or want, you find that in me. What's the next step to that? Then ask. Whatsoever ye ask, whatsoever, whatsoever, ye ask the Father in my name. That I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything in my name, if ye ask anything in my name, are you asking for salvation? Do you want to be sanctified and purified and made holy? Do you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and be anointed with the Holy Ghost and feel and have the sword of the power of God? If he has anything in my name, I will do it. Chapter 15 of John, verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will. Isn't that the result of being complete in Christ? Isn't that the result of saying anything I need, everything I need, it's in Christ? I don't need to go outside Christ to have anything I need. I don't need to go outside the Bible to have anything I need. I don't need to go outside the church to have anything I need. If ye ask anything, ye shall ask what ye will. It shall be done unto you. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Freely give us all things. If we are complete in him, that should be the natural thing, that freely, since we are complete in him, and we are in union with Christ, then he will freely give us all things. In fact, in verse 37, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Complete victory is in Christ for you and for me because we are complete in him. And at the end of time, here is what you will find in Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, reading from verse 6 and verse 7. And he said unto me, it is done. Nothing remains to be done that has not been done. It is done. You remember those words? It is finished on the cross of Calvary. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a source of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. He says, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. You might say, oh, that's the problem. That's the problem. 
He that overcometh, but you don't understand the grace you need to overcome that's available for you also. You don't understand the power you need to overcome that's available for you also. He that overcometh, grace available, power available, truth available, authority available, faith is also available. It says, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God, he shall be my son. There is no reason under the sun why you should not be an overcomer. Because everything you need to overcome, everything is made available for you. What are we going to do now? In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Tonight, the Lord has shown us very clearly in his word that if we come into union with Christ, then we are complete in Christ. And our completeness in Christ will mean all things are available for us. Let's rise up on our feet and let us claim what rightfully belongs to us. We are complete in him. We are complete in him. This is something to rejoice about. All I need, I find in Christ. Rise up upon your feet. And begin to talk to the Lord in prayer. If you have not been born again, this is the time to tell the Lord, I know forgiveness is available. I know salvation is available. I know peace of mind is available. I know that God can write my name in the book of life now. It's been done. It's been done. It's been done. Christ has provided for it. I can be saved now. You know, that sanctifying blood is still available. He can sanctify you now. He can purify you now. He can make you holy through and through right now that a new nature will be given unto you. New life and new insight will be given unto you. It's available in Christ. If you will say, I know sanctification is not something far away. It's in Christ and complete in Christ. I can have it now. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Have you been sanctified and you're looking for the power of the Holy Ghost so that the endowment of power from on high will come upon your life? Pray unto the Lord that he will baptize you. He will anoint you. He will clothe you. He will cover you with the fire of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost. It's available. It's available. What do you need? You need healing for your body. He can make you completely whole. You need provision in the family. He can provide and supply. All you need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You know why? Because we are complete in him. 